we've uh, put the crankcases together now and when I actually put the gasket here and bolted it up the crank was just a bit tight so I took it apart again and just drifted this bearing half nothing further out and now it runs quite smoothly so that's grand so we got the gasket in there with the high Lamar and all the bolts done on so jobs are good we know we can start the next thing really to do there's two things amongst others one is put the piston on and the other one is put the subframe on so I think we'll put the subframe on first for no real reason apart from that's the way we'll do it I'll just bring your attention to this pipe here that's the induction pipe and what it does it when the piston goes up it creates a vacuum in the crankcase and some of that vacuum is transferred along this pipe to there and then that goes into the carburetor let me just find the carburetor there it is alright let's work this out where are we That's the bit. there we go that way around yeah and that operates the pump to pump the fuel so if that's not connected you won't pump any fuel if it's got a little hole in it or a little crack in it it won't pump properly so we've got to bear, bear that in mind if you think it's a bit iffy change it okay so we put this like that that and then to line things up and connect that pipe first of all bit fiddly you want it to be on there properly just careful with anything like these snipe nose pliers or little levers or something like that because you don't want to damage the rubber there we go. Now then, the rubber mounts. There we've got a peg. Can you see that peg there? And the rubber mount. That peg goes inside this bit here. Pop that out. Pop that in. Pop that back in. Now these rubber buffers, they need to be down in their housings. There we go. Okay. So, there are three rubber mounts. This first one here, drop the screw in and use the torque key winder in. Then the next one is in that rubber buffer that we've just put in. Drop the screw down. Okay. The other one, the induction pipe still attached. The other one goes here, and it's a longer one with this washery thing on. There we go. Okay, then in these two, there are some plastic bongs. The one on the back is self explanatory. Just pop it in, and it's level with the surface this one's a bit worse for wear this one here has got this moulding in the top 
and that will be for the chain catcher it locates the chain catcher so let's just pop that in knowing that we might have to turn it a bit so that it's in the right place go on you devil there we go and I can't quite remember but I think that bit I haven't got it quite right but what the hell right so we now got the subframe mounted to the engine we haven't got an oil pump on there or a chain brake and we haven't got the flywheel on but I wanted to talk to you briefly about the piston right there's a front and a back of the piston the back is identified there are a couple of little pins the one there and one there this one's on the bottom groove and this one's on the top groove and those pins are to stop the rings turning because the exhaust ports at the front and if the rings turned round and, and one of the ends if we can see there's a gap in the rings one of the ends found its way round here it could quite easily get entangled with the exhaust port so the gaps in the rings are always facing at the back when you look at the cylinder the rings never come down below or never go over the induction port induction port there quite low down on the cylinder exhaust port quite high up I've done a little drawing about this here we go that's the one of the ring grooves with the pin steel pin and then either at the ends of the rings have got a little half notch in them that sits round that pin so the notches are always facing upwards hopefully that makes sense I've taken the rings off this piston you can normally see when the rings are fairly worn because the exhaust side which of course is the top side here opposite the gap that's where it wears okay so sometimes you see the ring thinner there but just to give it a, a rough check and you've got to be careful here pop the ring in like that and just turn it round and there shouldn't be very much of a gap there between the ends of the ring if there's a huge gap then you know the rings are quite worn if you wanted to get a bit fundamentalist about it you could actually measure that gap with a feeler gauge and go well I mean I'm assuming the gap should be something like four or five thou but if it's um, say twenty thou that's thousands of an inch then you know the rings are getting fairly worn but they're about a tenner each ten pounds twelve pounds each so you want to be careful and not replace stuff that's still serviceable now the rings are made out of cast iron so you've got to be careful with them because they will break if you leave them too much snap that's it yeah, they're scrap then that brings me into a, a story about uh, a Land Rover two and a quarter diesel that I rebuilt rebuilt the engine a number of years ago and the chap who had it before said oh, I put new pistons and rings and everything in it anyway he'd used pattern pistons and rings and when I came to take the, the rings out of the pistons they were a bit gummed up and you sort of what you do is you, you get your thumbnails on either end of the ring and just ease it open anyway I did that and the rings bent so these pattern rings are actually made out of mild steel and about as much use as a poke in the eye with a pointed stick right I'm just getting my head round this there's a pin on the bottom ring so we really could do with something just to raise this up 
How about a painting? That'll do. This is the back of the piston, that's the front. The rings are on the back, the, the pins are on the back. Now you very gently open the ring up and go past the first groove and then locate the ring round that pin. You won't be able to see this but I'll put it near the camera and let's just see what happens. I'll move it slowly so the camera can auto focus. Shaking like a good one there. Right, next ring. The notches want to be on the top and this time the pin's this side at the back. Open her up gently, ever so gently. I've already just clean these grooves out. If you've got a broken piston ring then they're ideal for cleaning the grooves out. You get mork and carbon and gum in there and stuff like that and if the saw's been stuck around for a long time, not run, then you'll get old oil in there that sort of hardens and turns out like um, treacle and it just makes things a bit difficult. Okay gaps at the back, that's the front of the piston. Okay, How do you fit the piston and what's more, how do you take the piston off the little end, off the rod? This is the gudgeon pin and that is a little, re little, little needle roller that just sits over that gudgeon pin. But, of course, it sits in the gap between those two gudgeon uh, two Gudgeon pin bosses. The pin is a tight fit in those bosses. So to be able to get the piston off and to be able to put it back on, you've got to get the blowtorch out. Got to warm it up, which means it's quite a delicate operation so you don't burn your fingers. So Let's have a go, see what happens. Once we've pushed the gudgeon pin through, then there is a little dinky circlips that go in a groove in the gudgeon pin boss. They're really easy to lose. So, this might be entertaining. Let's stick the gas on. I'll tell you what, I'll just move this saw out of the way. And that tin of paint. Any other fuel around? No. Whilst we're doing this, it's the front of the piston, this skirt here, that takes all the wear. So I've had pistons where when you look at this end, the bottom of the skirt, the front skirt is half the thickness of the back one. So it allows the piston to rock, which is not a good idea. It means the, that the ports won't seal properly and so therefore you're not sucking as much fuel and the saw is not as reliable. So the pistons will wear out, especially if you've had a little bit of abuse. There may be sort of a lot of over revving or... Um, ah, now I can just feel that gudgeon pin starting to move. Smoking hot. Can you see that? It's um, it's actually moving. 